Hi, Bertrand. This is Thierry Dubois with Aviation Week. Thank you very much for taking some time for us. So, is everything happening according to plan? Hello, Thierry. Nice. nice to hear you, Thierry. Yes. So, let's go. Uh, speak, please speak a little bit louder in your, in your phone. Will do. So, is everything happening according to plan? With Solar Impulse, we have learned to make not too many plans because things always change, always get adapted uh, during, the, during the mission. But uh, things are going well. Huh? You know, we had to postpone the departure on Sunday because the weather window was not good enough. Uh, I took off on Monday morning. And what is fantastic is that the team is always updating the flight plan according to the latest observations and forecasts, winds, sun, uh, clouds, uh, thing, things like that. So uh, I just got a new update for my flight plan an hour ago, and I'm flying a little bit more north than what was planned, which allowed me even to see an iceberg. There was a big iceberg on my right-hand side. How successful have you been with sleeping? I slept. Uh, <coughs> I had time for for uh, uh, sleep uh, between 11 and uh, 5 in the morning. So it's six hours, out of which I slept about the half. Uh, part of it was just uh, relaxation or trying to get to sleep and uh, or flying the plane because I had to make some corrections for altitude and, and trajectory. So I think I had yeah roughly three hours of sleep cut into 20-minute pieces. I, I feel well, I have to say. You know, when you are at home in your comfort zone and you sleep by little naps of 20 minutes, it's a nightmare. But when you're in the middle of an adventure, each piece of 20 minutes is, is just a gift and you take it and you're happy. From your standpoint, how is the Atlantic different? from the Pacific? Well, you know, the, the Atlantic is an iconic ocean. All the means of transportation have tried to cross the Atlantic to show that they were mature. So you had the, the uh, sailing races, you had the blue ribbon, you had the first steamboats, you know, you, 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 you hear of the Titanic who was the fastest boat to cross the Atlantic. You hear of Charles Lindbergh, you remember probably Double Eagle II, the first balloon who crossed the, the, the Atlantic, 1976, I think, or 78. Uh, Richard Branson, who crossed it with a hot air balloon. Um, you have the airship, the Edinburgh. So to be able to attempt the crossing of the Atlantic with a first, uh, for a first ever with a solar airplane, uh, for me, it's fantastic. And it's very, very symbolic because it shows that we are now coming in a new era. Uh, we, if really we can do it without fuel, it really shows that aviation continues to lead innovation, continues to lead the dream of the people and try to have a, a better world. But is the weather, the, is the kind of weather you are getting different from what you got over the Pacific? The, on, on both, the, you, you have two parts of the Pacific. Huh? Uh, you have the part from, from Japan to Hawaii that André has done, where you always have a, a front in the middle. It's a waving front, and uh, you always have to cross it. And the Atlantic is the same. Uh, you also have a front, and I will cross it uh, uh, tomorrow morning. And now, the second part of the Pacific, from uh, Hawaii to San Francisco, to California in general, is an, is an easier part because usually you have the same weather all the way. So uh, I would say the, the Atlantic is similar to the first part of the Pacific. Thank you very much, Bertrand, for your time. And I wish you good luck. But you know, yes, thank you. And it's nice to know that aviation, aviation newspapers are also interested about solar aviation because uh, you know everybody 
thought I was completely crazy when I initiated this project. And uh, although there will not be a lot of solar airplanes in the future, probably there will be a lot of electric airplanes in the future. And uh, this flight across the Atlantic is also the first flight, the first attempt with an electric airplane. Uh, it's not only solar, huh? it's electric. We have batteries, we have uh, electric motors, and I believe really that this is the future of aviation, and within 10 years' time, there will be short or medium-haul airplanes for 50 people that would be fully electric, that can be plugged on the grid with renewable energies and land in the cities at night, making no noise, no pollution. This will bring a lot of additional business for the airports and for the airlines, and it will disturb nobody because it will be silent and and, and clean. So this is really the future, I think. We'll follow this very closely. Thank you again, Bertrand. Good flight. Thank you, Thierry. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.